Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where, despite the great selling still going to full effect, I do actually have stuff left that I haven't made videos on yet. Granted, this is something fairly new, but still. Today we're looking at Tobot V Powertrain. This is the train guy that combines with Master V to make whatever that enormous thing is called. This is kind of an interesting thing for me because like the alt mode is terrible. Like this right off the bat looks really bad. <laughs> and I'll get into more detail when I split it in half and we can look at it in more detail with things up closer. But this alt mode's not great. It is not great. It is very messy. Like Tokuger stuff was less messy than this. But I actually think the robot mode looks pretty cool and the integration with Master V, while not fantastic, it's still, you know, it adds to the whole. It's also funny because despite the fact that I feel like I should like Athlon Metron more because, you know, it turns into a commuter train, it's a big, cool looking robot, I actually like Powertrain better even though his alt mode is not great. Anyway, while I have him in this mode where we can actually see everything, I'm going to start bringing some folks in for size comparisons. Here he is with our old size comparison staple and a new size comparison staple. And yeah, you might be wondering why I've got Cybertron Downshift here instead of Siege Hound. Well, that's because Siege Hound has moved on to a different owner because the Great Selening is in effect. And if you're unfamiliar with the Great Selening, um, you can check the video there. I'll also link in the description below. Basically, I don't have Siege Hound anymore, and I put uh, Downshift next to a couple of deluxes, like more recent-ish deluxes that I have, and he seemed to be about the same height, so I figured for now he'll be my deluxe size comparison. But anyway, yes, here you can see Powertrain is uh, tiny, but at the same time not. Like, this is a small train, don't get me wrong, but it's also, there's a lot to it. Like, I have to pull this camera pretty far back and I've got them curved so that I don't actually have to pull back even further and show the edges of the of the backdrop. So uh, it's a weird mix. And for part of the uh, rest of Master V, here he is with Monster and Rocket. Again, tiny train, but at the same time, not tiny. It's weird. And here you can see him with the last third of Master V and Super Driller. And yet again, it's just kind of a weird, wonky scale going on here. And I didn't mention this in Super Driller's video, but if that's supposed to be, that little strip of light blue up there is supposed to be the cockpit, then Super Driller is absolutely massive and in no way scales with any of the other vehicles here. Not that scale matters to me or in this line at all. It's just, it's a huge discrepancy. Any who's it's with all that out of the way, let's uh, let's move this in a little bit closer, make things a little bit easier for me, and we can start looking at powertrain in more detail. So first, gonna disconnect that, and it's just a little peg there, and it holds together really well, actually. I kind of kind of like that, like that holds. I appreciate that, but anyway, I'm gonna just pop that in and straighten all of this out. Okay, there we go. Now that's a little bit better. So yeah, um, powertrain is yet again kind of a speedy, I think this is meant to be a commuter train, I don't know for certain. Each side is pretty much, like design-wise, each side is pretty much identical. The only difference being, uh, you know, if you look at it from one direction, you've got all the screw holes and stuff. If you look at it from the other direction, it's less bad, kind of. But yeah, the only real difference between the two, like design-wise, is uh, you've got the Express logo up there on the one side and not the other. Not on either side, as you can see. We're just going to look at this one because it's the one that's closest to the camera. And, like, the detailing's nice. You've got the wheels and doors and windows. The uh, doors barely stand out. I kind of feel like panel lining would be cool, but at the same time, I don't know if I want to do that because I don't know how it would look on the whole, and I don't know, if, like, I wouldn't want this guy to stand out from the others with him being the only one with panel lining. I like that you can just barely see in there, though, 
the connecting corridor between the train cars. Like they molded just a little bit on the edges around the hinge. And then moving up towards the front, the uh, front of the train doesn't look bad. It uh, also seems to have like a little, I don't really know if that's like a show thing or if that's an accuracy to the train model thing, but it almost looks like a little gun. <laughs> and of course the V, because it's a Tobot V. Um, is that actually... Huh, that has a tiny bit of wiggle to it. I didn't realize that. Anyway, the cockpit conductor section is... Like, it's molded, but it's not painted super well. And then it's got this light blue on the sides there that almost look like eyes. Which, maybe it is. I don't really know how the show works, but... Uh, it's strange. Like, the detailing is molded there. The paint color is good. I like the red, white, and blue... It's just a color scheme that works together where you've got like primarily white with like red and blue accents. It's just not a whole lot stands out in the train mode on either thing. Because again, this is pretty much exactly the same except the the uh, Express logo there. And also here, it's like this blank spot. And up here, there's a very obvious robot head that, uh, yeah, you can't really turn it to hide it any better. But anyway, yes, as we get in close to look at the top here, you can see some molded in like air conditioning units and a little thing that hits the wires to give it electricity and half a robot pelvis and kind of the, I think this is supposed to be another thing that does the electricity thing, but it's like sunken so far down that it would never work. I'm just, I'm not into this train mode. The colors are nice. I just don't really think it comes across very well. It's very sloppy looking. Well, maybe sloppy is the wrong word. It's very messy looking. It's nice that the molding is there, but it's you got to get in really close and you can't really see it all that well, even when you are in close. Because again, like those doors, they're there, but you got to get the light to hit them just right to even notice them. And it's just a little, just a little disappointing in terms of this mode. However, there is also a robot mode, of course, which we're going to look at right now. And I actually think that works a bit better. So, let me readjust this, and we will start with the guy in back for the transformation. So, very simple. Just bring that out, fold that up, and what do you think that's going to be? You don't get any prizes for guessing right. And then rotate this, because you want these clips lined up here. And then you just fold this down, fold this down, and fold that in. And you can kind of see where this is going already. Let's put that off to the side, and we'll do the mirrored thing here. Just flip that up, bring that out, rotate this, because again, you want the clips lined up. Put that down, flip that down, flip that in, and then the one difference here is you want to flip out the head, and you want to flip it out more than it's supposed to go, because when you bring this in, you want this bit here to clip over this post here, I'm gonna do that first. Then you can clip the two halves together. And there we have powertrain. Oh, it actually is pretty close to on point with that uh, with that angling of the camera, that's cool. This robot mode definitely has its problems, but I actually kind of like it. I think it's kind of cool how it's like two sections of train just like mashed together, like symmetrical docking style. That's kind of neat. And I like how you've got this kind of symmetrical pattern now due to the fact that there are two train halves, two mirrored train halves, just smooshed together going down the middle. Again, I think the color scheme is really solid. I think the tones are great. I think the breakup looks nice here. You get a bit more, because you've got the tops of the trains for the fronts of the legs facing forward, you got black there, a little black for the waist, another V for the belt buckle. It comes together pretty nicely. Granted, he looks like he could be a mascot for Cool Whip, but it still looks pretty cool. That said, there are problems. Now the molding here, like... <sighs> okay, we'll start with the details. So getting in close here, you can see it's pretty much the exact same stuff that was in the train mode. Like the exact same stuff. The only real difference is you're seeing this bit from like a slightly different perspective. So it comes together to make the waist section. And then... Yeah, then, then you've got the head, which is the other new bit. But uh, 
I mean, it works. As I said, the way that like this stuff comes together to kind of mirror design elements is cool. But there's no real new detailing that appears. I mean, you could technically count this, but really the only new detail is the head. And it's, uh, you know, it's okay for what it is. The head itself is kind of neat. I like how they gave him kind of like a, looks kind of like a train conductor hat. And that is, that is loose. I'm going to need to see if I can tighten that up somehow. But it looks cool. They've got it uh, broken up a bit, which is nice. It's not just like a solid blue. I like that it's kind of that core blue, but then you've got the gray face with the light blue eyes that barely stand out because the brim of the hat is so far out. But then also like the dark gray for the ear bits and the orange. I really like the orange coming through the blue there and kind of spreading out along the brim of the hat. And they even gave him a little robo beard like mine. I appreciate the homage, young toys. Yeah, like silhouettes, not too bad. I like the chunkiness. Like I said many times, I like the mirrored thing that they do here. The thing that bugs me about this robot mode, aside from the height, which I'll get to in a minute, is the fact that the fists are just the ends of a train. Like, there's nothing to this that's like, hey, that's a fist. Like, I guess it's kind of, if you look at it just right, you can kind of see a fist molded there, but only if you look at it from this angle. If you're looking at it like this, it's just a train. I kind of wish that there was some way for this to, you know, show as a fist a little bit better. Like, you can't turn anything here. You can't turn here. The only thing you can really turn is at the shoulder here. And that's the only way, like, there's just no way to, like, rotate the arms to kind of bring the fist detailing forward to make it read better as a fist. Also, the elbows are here. And that's as far as they go. I mean... I've said before that I view these things mostly as Super Sentai toys, so posability is not a huge deal to me, but I feel like if you were going to break up the sculpt as much as you did for this to happen, like up here in train mode, down here in robot mode, if you're going to break it up that much, put it in a place where it functions a little bit better, <laughs> maybe give it a little bit more range than that. I mean, I, I know it also has to work in conjunction with the combination, but it's just, it's just sad. But I think the robot, on the whole, aesthetically, looks pretty nice. I do like the look of the standalone robot mode. It's just a pretty disappointing vehicle mode, and the detailing could be better, could be brought out a little bit better. And I do kind of, like, I like the red and the black combination you get to see from the side here. I kind of wish you could see more of that in the way this comes together, but it is what it is. Anyway, as I was saying, the other thing that bugs me about this guy is his size. Which brings us to size comparisons. And, I mean, he is definitely larger, significantly larger than a deluxe. But if this is the first Tobot video of mine that you're seeing, you may not understand why this bums me out. Because he does seem to be a decent size from this comparison, but if I bring in the other Tobots, okay, if I bring in Super Driller, he's only a little bit shorter than Super Driller, but he's also significantly less bulky. I mean, I don't necessarily mind it either way, but again, not the, I guess not the best comparison to show why this is disappointing. So let's move on to Master V, and I think here you can really kind of <laughs> I think here you can get a better idea for why I'm a little bit like, eh, he's on the tiny side. Because Master V, as I've said before, he's slightly taller, slightly taller than like the standard Tobot size. Like standard Tobot is probably about here. So Powertrain, he's a, he's a short fellow. He is a short fellow. Like not a huge deal, but it's a little disappointing. All right, so as I said, somewhat disappointing vehicle mode, pretty decent robot mode. I mean, I do have my nitpicks, but I think overall, I think, I think, I think, overall, the standalone robot mode for powertrain is fine. I wouldn't necessarily want him, like, as a standalone figure, and that would be, like, my only Tobot V figure, but I feel like if I were to, you know, disassemble Master V and just have the team all spread out, I wouldn't mind having him there. I think he'd look pretty cool standing next to, you know, Super Driller and 
Master V and whatever the plane guy is going to be called when he comes out. But his primary function is shoes. So let's make some shoes. So just going to undo the clip there and then undo that. Flip his head back in and going to flip the toe down. Rotate the leg out. I'm gonna make sure to flip this little bit up. Then, okay, what are we doing next? Uh, oh, yes, next. Okay, so just gonna flip up the fist, bring the arm out a little bit just to get it out of the way. Rotate this all the way around, and you'll see there's actually a clip on the underside of the arm here. That's gonna go in there. So fold that down, and that'll clip in there. Then bend that all the way up and this is going to be a foot or shoe however you want to look at it other side same deal straighten that out bring that up just a little bit to get out of the way rotate it around flip that down rotate it up you want the uh that lined up with the hinge there bring that all the way up and then clip clip in there bring it down and clip it in and Another shoe. We're gonna bring in Master V's pants because it's just gonna be easier because, you know, with just the pants, it's just lighter. <laughs> so I'm going to unclip the wheels on the bottom here and you don't have to move these wheels out. It is shown in the instructions and I think it does kind of help to kind of fully bulk out the legs, but rotate those out and then, whoop. Aha, I already screwed up. I bet some of you caught that. I forgot to flip this bit out on the other foot or shoe. So what you do is this will clip into the bottom of the foot there, and then this will clip into the back there. So just clip that in and clip that in and clip that in. And I don't know if you can see it, but that will find its way clip in. And now Master V has platform shoes and then we'll just bring in the rest of master v with super driller attached plug him in place and i will move the camera hey everybody just a quick follow-up to the placement of the feet uh turns out you can put them on either side i don't have the directions handy to know which one is the correct side but in terms of how it all works out it pretty much functions the same either way and if you have the screws facing out then you actually get these uh, pelvis pieces kind of out of the way which gives the ankles just a little bit cleaner of a look on the inside and it kind of works with the silhouette of the wheels on the outside so just thought y'all should know. And so <laughs> here we have Master V with his platform shoes on and he's definitely taller. I guess it's not bad. I mean, I like the way the legs bulk out a bit. It kind of helps in terms of uh, syncing up a little bit better with the increased bulk he's got in the torso now. The shoes, I don't know, they seem, they're a little too narrow and they come forward a little bit too far. I know limitations of the toy and all that. I'm just saying, proportionally speaking, I feel like while it's great they make him taller, these are still a little bit weird in terms of their uh, proportions. Just, uh, just a little bit. Like if I uh, rotate them to the side here, you can see they definitely give him big heels. They just stick out so far. And like, if you wanted to, I guess you could pop these up and put them back up there and just to kind of change things up a little bit but that kind of makes it look even more like clown shoes because at least when you have the foot down here it kind of semi tapers into this going on here so it's okay not a great look but it's fine it's fine i am still interested to see what he looks like once the uh plain thing comes in to essentially just give him a backpack and I think a head crest. Uh, it's going to be silly, but I am looking forward to it. Anyway, just to satisfy 
anyone's potential curiosity here, you can see how tall he is with the platforms on. And I mean, he wasn't a slouch before, but he is a lot taller now. He is at this point with the powertrain shoes on. He is pretty much the same height as Big Troll. And I will be getting to Big Troll. You all better believe Big Troll is not going to be part of the Great Selening. No, 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 no. That's not going anywhere. But Master V with his platforms on is about the same height. I'm just not trotting out Big Troll because I haven't done a video on him yet. Downshift is an exception to that rule. It's my channel. I can do what I want. But yeah, that is it for Powertrain. And uh, it's, it's fine. I think, as I said, as a standalone, I don't know if whether if I should focus down here, focus up here, because this is more visually interesting, but this is what we're talking about. Let's put him back into his standalone robot mode. Dilemma solved. Anyway, Powertrain is, as I said, is he's not the strongest in terms of standalone towbots. He's not terrible, but that vehicle mode is just not that great. And really, his primary function is just shoes. I do think it's nice that his standalone robot mode, like his his robot mode really is, it doesn't feel like an afterthought. This does work relatively okay as its own thing. It could be better, but it does work. It's just, you know, his main thing is he's supposed to be shoes and he's passable as shoes. I'm not disappointed, really. I, I don't regret getting him or going in on Master V or anything like that. It's just, it could have been handled a little bit better in places. But I mean, they, they can't all be big troll. I know, that's just unreasonable to think that. But anyway, that is enough about what I think. What do you all think of Tobot V Powertrain? Have any of you started going in on the Master V set since these videos have started or since before these videos have started? Is it something you're thinking of going in on now? And just for fun, as far as the idea of symmetrical docking goes, what's your favorite symmetrical docking figure? And in terms of shoe formers, how do you think Powertrain works out? I mean, I don't think he's the worst set of shoes that I've seen in combined form. There are definitely some Sentai figures that I think have that beat. But yeah, in terms of robots that become shoes, where do you think he fits in the grand scheme of things? Do you think he's on the higher end? of being not bad, or is he just terrible? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And while you're at it, also feel free to like, subscribe. If you're feeling generous, you could buy me a coffee. Link will be in the description below for that. And if you are interested and in the market for any figures that I might have covered in the past or that I might not have covered yet and am in the process of getting rid of anyway because I'm just bad at managing my time and money, if you're interested in any of that stuff, there will also be a link in the description to my eBay page for The Great Selling, um, at least as of this recording and original posting. If you're watching this video like three years down the line in like 2022 or something like that, then um, don't be surprised if there's either nothing there or very little there anymore. But as of right now, if you are interested, there are still close to 70-ish things that are still up for grabs. Anyway, any of those things would make me a happy Rob as I have gone on way too long with this. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.